guess we are recording um good evening and welcome to the sixth lecture of this uh, vsla course vector space linear algebra course um so uh, um we'll do some problems today on the algebra of transformations uh, which we discussed last time um and uh, you know uh, go to the ideas of isomorphism and representation of um, uh, transformations by uh, matrices right and how it becomes uh, much more simpler when we you know uh, talk about transformations in terms of matrices um and if time remains we'll start with the everything matrices uh, section of this uh, course all right uh, so uh, we'll take a small uh, review of what what, uh, what what we what we mean by linear transformations and so on so first things first we we uh, define a linear transformation in this way where uh, it's a function that goes from uh, one vector space to another vector space and both these vector spaces should be defined over the same field f right and it uh, and said to be linear if this sort of a condition holds for all the vectors in the domain and for all scalars over the field uh, over which these two vector spaces have been defined we then saw some examples on uh, you know uh, some uh, transformations like linear transformation uh, so differentiation integration and so on right um and then we uh, came about you know talking about this um, this idea where we said that if uh, we have a finite dimensional vector space uh, let's say uh, with some basis ordered basis then uh, we have a unique linear transformation which takes this basis to any set of n vectors in this uh, uh, in the codomain of the of the transformation t right um this will become this became important for us to discuss when we were uh, talking about range and null space of a transformation a range is basically any vector which can be reached through the tra tra transformation t right uh, from the domain to codomain and null space is basically any uh, any vectors in the uh, domain of t uh, such that which maps to the zero element of the uh, codomain there is zero vector of the uh, w right uh, and we defined two terms rank and nullity uh, rank was basically the dimensionality of uh, the uh, range of t and nullity was the dimensionality of null space of t we already discussed that you know your range and null space are um, subspaces of the codomain and the domain respectively uh, when we discussed the idea of sub subspaces in um, uh, vector spaces right um, then uh, we uh, we showed uh, i mean uh, yeah so uh, we we then proved a very important theorem called the rank nullity theorem which says that uh, if you have any vector space v um, uh, and if you have a, a tra linear transformation that is t goes from v to w um, then um, um, and if we assume that v is finite dimensional then we can say that the dimension of v can be written as the uh, rank and nullity of the transformation t so one thing to note here is that t is something which is um, uh, which needs uh, the other vector space that is your w whereas uh, dimension of v is something which is uh, inherent to the vector space v right um, anyway so uh, that uh, so if we proved this uh, rank and uh, nullity theorem and we then saw some uh, examples on on delayed transformations and how uh, rank nullity theorem can help us in in different uh, places um okay we then define something called as algebra of transformations that is uh, if we uh, what does it mean to add two linear transformations uh, what does it mean to do a scalar multiplication of a transformation and we saw that the, the such operations defined on the set of all linear transformations uh, is actually a vector space over the uh, field f right uh, and we proved that using you know uh, the usual uh, you know a proof of how we prove uh, something is a vector space right um, so we proved that uh, your uh, tau plus that is your, if tau is e, a set of all linear transformations from uh, b to w then that uh, tau um, uh, uh, comma plus is an abelian group and we and we, and we said that uh, the scalar multiplication uh, defined over this uh, same field f would now become a um, you know, would satisfy the four properties of scalar multiplication and hence we, we showed that tau uh, with this uh, uh, given addition and uh, scalar multiplication operations is a vector space over the same field f right um, and, and we also saw, also saw something called as the composition operation which is similar to the uh, 
composition operation of your uh, functions and we said that if we have t and uh, u are two linear uh, transformations uh, uh, th then the composition of them is also a linear transformation okay uh, huh. we, we we then spoke about something called as invertibility uh, we said that uh, uh, any uh, transformation t is invertible if we can find another transformation that is u which uh, uh, you know which when composed with this uh, t either left composition or right composition both of them should should give you basically the uh, identity uh, mapping which, which basically means uh, that whatever is the element you, you get the element back that's your i uh, may i uh, transformation right we then you know proved that uh, such a such a, a transformation has to be unique and the fact that it has to be one one and on two okay uh, uh, we we also spoke about something called as non-linear uh, as on singular linear transformation where we said that um, if a transformation is such that if if t gamma equal to zero implies that gamma equal to zero that means if the null space of the transformation is only the zero vector then we say that it is a non-singular and this we also proved that uh, if t is one one then it has to be non-singular and if t is non-singular it means uh, it is one one right so these two are in some sense equivalent definitions of defining um, non-singularity okay um and um yeah we also proved this another theorem which says that if t is non-singular uh um i mean t is non-singular if, if and only if it if t carries um each linearly independent subset of v onto a linearly independent subset of w that is uh if i have a linearly independent subset of the domain then applying the transformation t on each of those vectors uh what uh uh resultant sub subset you get of the codomain will also be linearly independent and this will be true if and only if um, t is non singular right uh, so we'll use these ideas uh, to prove some more uh, some more things today um, so uh, uh, the last thing we, we, we saw was this theorem which said that if we have v and w uh, such that they are finite dimensional um, and they have the same dimension uh, between them then uh, uh, these three are equivalent to, to saying that i mean uh, if t is invertible is equal to saying that t is non-singular and is also equal to saying that t is on two right um anyway so we, we, we proved this uh, stuff uh, we we have some extensions to the theorem that is um the idea that uh, uh, what we discussed till now was that uh, you know uh, t is on two t is uh, uh, one uh, non singular and t is invertible we can extend this conditions even to uh, two more ideas that is if alpha 1 to alpha n is a basis for v and i, I will have n elements because we have assumed that uh, dim v is n right dim v is n so i have n elements in my basis so this alpha 1 to alpha n is the basis for v then t alpha 1 to t alpha n is going to be a basis for w right and the thing is since dim v is equal to dim w so w will uh, w will also have uh, the the elements um, the basis for w will also have n elements as uh, shown here and then uh, 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 the the second condition here uh, second uh, thought process here is that there is some basis that is alpha 1 to alpha n for v such that t alpha 1 is the basis for w right so uh, these are two separate things here we are saying that if this is a basis then by, by applying t uh, i uh, get uh, the basis for w here the idea is 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 that i'm saying that okay if i have a um, basis for w that is uh, uh, which i can reach by applying um, uh, you know t on, on some vector uh, on some vectors alpha 1 to alpha n then this will be a, a basis for v right so here we are saying that having a basis for v implies that w will have a basis here we're saying that uh, having a basis for w will imply that v will have a basis right anyway so uh, so we'll uh, prove it in the same way uh, we'll we'll use the second condition that we discussed previously that is uh, t is non singular right to prove uh, the first part of the uh, first uh, extension that is 2 implies a I mean then uh, go into the cyclic manner uh, to prove uh, a, a is b and then b is uh, b implies 2 right okay so uh, 2 implies a means that uh, so we assume that t is non-singular now if since t is non-singular we know that t will carry uh, linearly independent subsets that is uh, uh, 
since t is non singular so if any uh, subset let's say beta 1 to beta m is not uh, is linearly independent subset of uh, uh, v then t beta 1 to t beta m will be a linearly independent subset of w right um, right uh, so since um, sorry um, Uh, since our um, uh, alpha 1 to alpha n is basically linearly independent by definition of basis so t alpha 1 to t alpha n is also going to be linearly independent right uh, and, and, and this is because of the theorem that we saw before that is um, this theorem right where we said that if it is non-singular then it carries over carries the linear uh, independence to the uh, codomain uh, also right so hence it's it's going to be a linearly independent subset of w right because uh, these are all vectors in w and we already know that the dimension of w is go is n right if, 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 if we have the condition that dim v is equal to dim w so now we have that we have a set of n vectors which are linearly independent and that the dimension of w is n so hence this can be a this is a base this is one of the basis for w right so this is a basis of the codomain w now uh, a implies b is straightforward right because what we're saying we're saying that um, yeah uh, so we are, we are we are saying that basically that um, yeah so we are, we are saying that if uh, um, if this is true then this is then the the, the b um, item is true uh, which, which is straightforward right because if this is true then uh, by uh, this is just a rearrangement of the um, uh, sentence to to to, imp to imply uh, b right now we look at b in implication 2 so we are saying that if uh, um, uh, alpha 1 to alpha n is a basis for b and t alpha 1 to t alpha n is a basis for w we need to prove that t is non-singular right so we'll use the idea of uh, contradiction and uh, you know uh, uh, see whether we can uh, uh, come to a contradiction so we'll, we'll assume that t is non-singular so if it is non-singular that means that there exists some alpha which is non-zero such that t of alpha is zero right but by, by, by definition of non uh, uh, singularity uh, so uh, so let alpha be equal to uh, some uh, linear combination of the basis right and this is true because the basis spans the vector space um, and you said that this is not equal to zero now when i apply t of alpha here right so i get uh, summation i ci t of alpha i uh, as the resultant vector and this is because t is a linear transformation right by, by, by definition of, of linear transformations um, now uh, we, we're saying that this uh, is equal to zero right so uh, what are we saying we're saying that we're saying that um, uh, i have found a set of uh, you know a set of um, uh, uh, scalar ci such that uh, the, the, the linear combination of the uh, basis vectors is zero which is not possible right because this would then imply that t of alpha i that is the um, um, uh, vectors obtained by applying the transformation t on each of these alphas is linearly dependent and this cannot happen because we know that this set is a basis for w right so this is a contradiction and hence uh, the uh, what we assume that t is non-singular is not true and therefore we can say that uh, if this happens then 2 is true so now we have proved that uh, 2 uh, implies a implies b and implies 2 so therefore when dim w is equal to dim v right and we have a transformation uh, t goes from v to w right if you want to prove that t is um, uh, t is invertible we can go ahead with any of these conditions right that is either we prove it is on to or it is one one right or it is uh, i mean uh, uh, yeah the, the, the basis uh, uh, can be uh, interchanged right so so uh, applying uh, t on the basis applying t on the basis results in another basis right 
okay so uh, some ideas in in, in the uh, uh, algebra of linear transformations so we'll now look at some examples of you know um, some transformations and see how to uh, find the inverse and so on right um, so first example uh, is that uh, so let's say we have some uh, field f and uh, the, the vector space is f square which we already know that, uh, which we already know that for any field f fn is a vector space right and i have a, a transformation um uh, t uh, which goes from f square to f square uh, f square to f square uh, says that t of x1 comma x2 is uh, gives x1 plus x2 comma x1 right so it takes two elements of the uh, input that is uh, x1 x2 and give and spits out again a two element vector uh, such that uh, the the resultant is basically uh, mentioned like this now we need to check if t is invertible or not and if yes we need to find t inverse now we we can very clearly see that dim v is equal to dim w because it, it, it's the same vector space which is equal to 2 here um, okay uh, so to prove whether t is invertible we, uh, we can basically use the same theorem that we that we just uh, proved before that uh, if uh, i can prove that uh, t is singular then uh, t is non singular then t will be invertible so uh, so it is considered t of alpha to be uh, 0 where alpha is x1 comma x2 so if t of alpha is to be 0 then that means so uh, the, the result of applying the alpha on t is given by this condition so this has to be equal to 0 the, uh, here 0 means the 0 vector of this <coughs> resultant the, 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 the codomain and, and we know that is 0 comma 0 um, so uh, two elements being equal uh, in the in the f square space would mean that each of these uh, tuples uh, elements are equal so x1 plus x2 it should is 0 and x1 is 0 so when x1 is 0 uh, putting that in this condition I get x2 also 0 right so that means your alpha which was so this implies that your x1 comma x2 is just 0 comma 0 right so which means alpha is 0 so what we have proved we have proved that t of alpha z is equal to 0 implies that alpha is 0 and therefore t is non-singular and from the previous theorem we, we uh, say that t is invertible right now the second part of the question is we need to prove that uh, whether t is uh, so, sorry uh, uh, what is it t inverse right so to t inverse basically here uh, is that so so let's say i have t of x1 x2 giving some z1 z2 we we have a form for z1 z2 uh, which is x1 plus x2 uh, comma x1 is equal to z1 plus z2 we so what we want to do is we ha we want to represent we, we, we want some uh, uh, you know um, uh, mapping between this uh, uh, two element vector which is uh, an element of f square to back to x f square right because t inverse is also going to be uh, a mapping from f square to f square in terms of these z1 z1 and z2s right so that basically uh, comes out like this right so z2 becomes x1 z1 is x1 plus x2 and uh, uh, you can uh, express x2 now in terms of z1 and z2 uh, which is mentioned here so so t inverse is just going to be uh, z2 and z1 minus z2 so uh, one can try to uh, see whether t t inverse is i and t inverse t is i or not right because this is the actual definition of you know i mean uh, the way you can check whether your uh, resultant transformation t uh, a t inverse is it a invert uh, truly an inverse or not right so it, this should be um, uh, uh, the, the the composition of, of these two uh, uh, transformations should be the kind uh, transformation right okay um now um we have a, a general uh, theorem here uh, which is the uh, idea of this question number six uh, in this particular section of hoffman kunze book so let's say i have a, a, tra a linear transformation which goes from fm to fn space right again uh, to remind you these are all these are both vector spaces right over the field f over the field f right such that m is greater than n right so it's taking a high dimensional vector space to a low dimensional vector space and i have a uh, another uh, transformation u which goes from a low dimensional vector space to a high dimensional vector space that is fn to fm now we need to prove that ut is not invertible 
right now uh, we'll prove first mathematically and, and and then try to derive some intuition around what why this could be the case and so on right so first things first um so what is ut uh, uh, the domain and codomain right so uh, ut is basically it, uh, the the domain of t that is it takes an element of the um, uh, element of the uh, uh, vector space fm and spits out a, a, an element of vector uh, vector vector space fn which then goes through you uh, goes through you and we get an element in the fm uh, fm space back right so ut is basically a, a mapping i mean a, a transformation from fm to fm space right now uh, so here for this particular uh, transformation uh, uh, ut right uh, the, uh, dim v is equal to dim w right so if we want to prove not invertible we can use any of those previous conditions that we had right so um, okay so let's consider some alpha uh, that is your uh, vector in fm space uh, as a uh, and and since it's a uh, uh, so uh, we'll use the uh, basis uh, here, uh, the, the standard basis, right? So where we define that E i is basically the tuple um, uh, such that your ith element, right? Ith element of this uh, uh, of this vector is one, and remaining all are zeros. Uh, we saw that this uh, uh, the set of all these uh, E i's, right? Is uh, is a, is basically a basis for this uh, vector space fm right and uh, where i equal to i mean 1 to m right um, and uh, so we can represent any vector alpha uh, in fm as a linear combination of the uh, basis vectors here right so have alpha is uh, uh, i equal to 1 to m ci ei uh, so i now apply t of alpha on this particular uh, 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 on this alpha and then so this basically becomes your uh, linear combination of the uh, application of t of ei right and this is from your definition of uh, linear transformations right now uh, now what we need to check uh, i mean uh, to, to to note here is that t of ei will never be a basis for um, fn right uh, so what is t t of e i though right t of e i is, is another set which is i equal to one to m right so so it's a uh, set of m elements of this particular um, uh, vector space f n right so this is a subset of f n right um, now the thing is um, uh, uh, this particular subset will never be a uh, basis and the reason here is that um, we know that the uh, uh, the basis uh, sorry uh, the, the, the the dimensionality of f n right dimensionality of f n is n right so any uh, linearly independent subset right cannot have more than n elements right so any subset of vectors in f n having more than n elements is not linearly independent right this we discussed in when we spoke about basis and dimensions so we we we, we talked about um, how we can use this idea to prove that there are um, uh, you know a, a single dimension for any vector space and so on so so uh, so, so 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 basically this will will not be a basis for the vector space uh, uh, and, and basically uh, it, it it won't be a uh, it, it won't be a, a linearly independent subset right so which means that which means that um, uh, I can find I can find uh, at least one of these uh, CIs okay so um, yeah so uh, I can find one CI such that it is uh, it is non-zero it is uh, uh, at least one uh, CI is non-zero such that this particular uh, summation, this particular co linear combination is zero, right? And it can happen because this subset is a, uh, a linear uh, dependent subset, right? So there exists some C A such that T, T alpha is zero, right? Which implies that U T of alpha is zero, right? So uh, we're saying that, um, so uh, so we, 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 we actually start with the idea that alpha can be any vector. So if alpha can be any vector, I'm able to reach this zero vector on this transformation ut from any of these vectors, right? So hence, um, 
So hence, uh, I can say that if ut of alpha is zero, it doesn't necessarily mean that alpha has to be zero, which means ut is singular. And then by, uh, by applying the previous theorem that since the, the dimension of the uh, domain of ut is equal to the dimension of the codomain of ut, right, uh, which is equal to in our case um, m, right, so we can say that ut is not invertible, right, okay. So uh, uh, one idea where this resonates with is the idea of compression, right. So for example, let's say when you want to send a signal uh, through a uh, through a, a, a low dimensional uh, channel, right? For example, let's say you have, um, or, or, or the idea of, uh, for example, let's say your uh, image compression, right? So image basically, let's say, uh, is some uh, belongs to some uh, 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 dimension f m cross n, right? So what you're trying to do when you compress this is uh, make this into some low dimensional space which is some um, um, you know some k dimensional uh, space where k is strictly less than m n right to save space right and then you try to bring back the image to your f m cross m space right to to actually view uh, to to actually view view the data right so this sort of a, a transform this uh, transformation is, is basically a lossy compression where you are guaranteed to lose the uh, the information, right? So it's it, because it's not invertible, you can never get back the actual image from where you came. But the idea uh, then becomes like how much loss is acceptable. So you, you then try to quantify how much loss has happened between this uh, the, the, these transformations, and then try to see uh, is that loss uh, okay uh, or, or not and then uh, choose the transformations uh, respectively okay so so that's the idea behind this um, this, this particular uh, you know um, problem okay okay moving on to the next uh, problem uh, this is a question 9 um, so uh, in the Hoffman Kunze books so that I, let's say we have um, uh, uh, two transformations t and u says that uh, uh, both operate on this um, vector space v and the dimension of v is finite and we have a and we have a uh, uh, transformation there uh, 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 such that t u is equal to i right so that is if i take an if i take alpha belonging to v if i first apply uh, u on it then i apply t on the resultant of this i get back alpha right um, what we need to prove is that t is invertible and that this u is actually the t inverse right see t inverse is such that when I apply T inverse on uh, on T, it should give me I and when I apply T on T inverse, I should get I, right? This is the condition for T inverse. Here U is just satisfying one of these conditions, that is this part of this uh, of the condition. We need to prove that U T is also I and then by definition, uh, U becomes T inverse, right? Okay, uh, so, so let alpha belong to V be any uh, vector uh, and let U of alpha be beta. This is well defined, right? Because u is defined on 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 the vector space v, so I can I can pass any vector to u, and it it, it spits out a, a vector beta, right? Now I apply t on this vector beta, right? Uh, since beta is a vector in v, so this also th this operation is also well defined. Now by definition of this uh, t u, this t of beta is 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 alpha, right? So what have what has happened here, right? So we, I, I've chosen that any vector in V, right? So uh, any arbitrary vector alpha in V is in the range of T because I can reach uh, alpha by applying some uh, by, by some vector beta in uh, V, right? So that means all of the the, the, the whole domain of uh, I mean uh, so, so so your range of um, uh, T is basically uh, v right which is uh, which is basically the codomain also right so hence we can say that t is on to and since t is on to uh, and uh, t is uh, basically going from v to v where your uh, where the uh, dimension of the domain right is the dimension of the codomain right and which is finite which is mentioned that it is finite Right, so we can apply the uh, uh, the, the, the 
theorem that we saw before to 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 say that t is invertible right now we we need to prove that u is use uh, actually the, the t inverse right so if t u is equal to i now i can apply t inverse on both the sides so i can say t inverse of t u is a uh, t inverse of i right t inverse of i is t inverse this is a straightforward thing uh, now we need to understand uh, so uh, this t inverse of t u i can write it as t inverse of t of u right now why is this okay why is this this is because from the fact that we saw we saw previously that uh, this um, this particular uh, composition operation right is linear right and uh, and from the fact that your uh, uh, your uh, uh, set of all transformations is 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 a vector space right so this rule of associativity will hold here right so hence what happens so, so, so i can i, I can I, I can choose to apply the uh, transformations in this order, and hence, uh, uh, and we know that t inverse or uh, t inverse t is i by definition of t inverse. So we get i u equal to t inverse, and therefore u is equal to t inverse, right? See, all of this was possible because of the fact that uh, we can uh, we have this t inverse uh, uh, t inverse t uh, t inverse t u becoming uh, this uh, way of writing, okay? Okay, good. Uh, um, fine. So with this, we'll move on to the next question. Okay. Um, so the, it is the question eleven of your uh, Hoffman Kunze book. Uh, so let's say we have a, a, a vector space v, v, v which is finite dimensional, uh, and we have a, a transformation t goes from uh, which goes from v to v, uh, uh, which is such that the rank of t square is the is equal to the rank of t. Okay. So uh, just as a refresher, rank of t is basically the dimensionality, right? Dimensionality of the range of t, right? Range of t subspace. So we need to prove that the range and null space of t are disjoint. Um, so disjoint here in the sense um, they they contain only so r of t intersection n of t is just a zero vector right so it, it's not strictly disjoint though uh, uh, in in set theoretic terms this is a, a disjoint in in terms of your um, vector space right because any any subspace will have the zero zero vector as part of it so therefore uh, the uh, disjoint basically comes from, from the fact that anything other than zero vector is is not a part of this uh, intersection okay uh, fine so so, so we, we want to prove that the, the, the range and null space of t are disjoint um, under this condition that rank of t square is equal to rank of t okay so uh, so, so uh, we, 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 we see that uh, t goes from v to v and t square is also a transformation from v into v right and the fact that uh, your uh, t is such that your uh, the the dimension of uh, domain is the dimension of codomain by the way right okay um so we now say that okay uh, let's assume that this is not true uh, so what, 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 what would that mean that would mean that there exists some alpha right which is non zero uh, uh, in the vector space v such that t alpha is zero right uh, t alpha is zero is the fact that it belongs to the um, null space of t and there is some beta in v through which i can reach alpha right and this is uh, true because it needs to belong to the range of t right okay so with this uh, so, so what i'll do now is i'll apply this t once again on on this um, uh, on this equation right so t squared of beta uh, becomes t times uh, t of t beta t beta is alpha by definition t alpha is zero because alpha belongs to the null space of t right so therefore i can say that beta belongs to the null space of t squared okay because t square beta is zero now let's uh, say that rank of t 
is the rank of t squared uh, which, which is which is given the question and, and, and let's say it's it's uh, uh, value k right so uh, basically uh, i have uh, so, so that means i i have some vectors a1 to ak right where a a belong to where vector space v so uh, so, so 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 there are some vectors uh, ai which belong to a1 to ak which belong to v which is the basis for the the range of t right so this is let's say rt and this is the basis for um, the the range of t um uh, huh. so, so the thing is now that this uh, uh, ai uh, all of these ai vectors are linearly independent by definition of basis if they are linearly independent and since the rank of t squared is also k okay, that means uh, the the dimensionality right the dimensionality of the range of t squared is also k okay, and i have a set of linearly independent vectors a1 to ak so uh, uh, which belong to i mean uh, 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 the subset of v right so therefore this rt a subset is also a basis for r of t squared right this is one idea that that we're using from the from the fact that rank of t is equal to rank of t squared right the second thing is that uh, so uh, so from the rank alt theorem we know that uh, dimension of v is going to be uh, 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 dimension of uh, sorry, sorry rank plus nullity right it's going to be rank plus nullity this is rank of t and nullity of t here in this case so so the nullity of t right is basically just the uh, n minus k right so uh, therefore uh, so i i i i i i i i form a basis for this uh, 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 for this subspace that is nullity of t as some a k plus 1 to a n vectors right now these vectors are also part of the uh, vector space v right so a k plus uh, 1 till a n are also a part of this uh, vector space uh, 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 v right um, uh, which span the span the null space of t so hence it's a basis for uh, it's a basis for your null space of t right now uh, since the rank of um, uh, t is equal to rank of t squared this implies that the nullity of uh, t is equal to the nullity of t squared also right because t and t squared both are defined on v to v right so therefore this nt can now be a basis for uh, uh, the uh, null space of t squared 2 with the same logic <laughs> that, we, that we used to prove that uh, uh, this set rt was the basis for r of t squared uh, the range of t squared right so if this is true what does it mean right now we know that uh, uh, we, we just saw that beta belongs to the null space of t squared if beta belongs to the null, null, space, null space of t squared that means I, I can basically write this beta to be a linear combination of the uh, uh, vector uh, the basis vectors of your uh, null space uh, the 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 um, uh, of uh, t squared right uh, the uh, uh, um, the basis uh, is also the um, uh, set nt right so therefore i can write beta to be some uh, combination of ak ak plus 1 to an vectors right which is here now when i apply the transformation t on this right i see that t of beta is equal to uh, 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 ci times t of ai right this is from the idea of uh, I mean, this is from the linear transformation uh, property now uh, since a since each of these ak plus 1 to an belong to the uh, uh, are, are, are basically vectors in the null space of t so each of these is zero which, which would then mean that this whole sum is zero right so we now we have proved that t beta is zero right but, but what was t beta though t beta was as uh, was the uh, value of alpha right so which implies that alpha is zero so which is a contradiction we have come to Right? because we said that al suppose that alpha has to be uh, some non zero vector uh, says that this all holds true so therefore uh, the only uh, element which can be in the in both the range and the null space of t is a zero vector and therefore uh, the range and null space of t are disjoint right uh, 
under this condition that rank of t squared is equal to rank of t okay okay so with this uh, we'll end the um, uh, algebra of transformations a part of the uh, uh, lecture uh, we'll now move to the area of isomorphisms okay um, so uh, how do you define an isomorphism is basically um, a, 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 a linear transformation which goes from uh, uh, a v to w uh, vector spaces let's say right uh, such that t is 1 1 right so any any 1 1 uh, you know linear transformation linear transformation is is, is called an, uh, an isomorphism right uh, and we say, and we say that v is isomorphic to w and vice versa that w is isomorphic to v if such a t exists right if such a t exists then we say that uh, v is uh, isomorphic to w right um, so uh, we will now prove a, a theorem which is which is like the cornerstone of many ideas in um, in the uh, linear algebra uh, the idea that every n dimensional vector space is isomorphic to fn okay so vector space um, yeah so uh, this vector space is defined over the field f by the way so this f comes from that field uh, so let me just uh, put that down here yeah uh, over the field f right so uh, so so, so I, I basically have vector space uh, let's say v which is the n dimensional vector space that is dim v is equal to n and it's defined over the uh, uh, field f right so if if it is n dimensional vector space so i, I can basically have uh, 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 vectors alpha 1 to alpha n uh, 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 as an ordered basis for uh, the uh, vector space v right vector space v so now i define a transformation t such that which takes an element alpha in in this vector space v and spits out a uh, an element in fn which is also a vector space in itself right this is a vector space we know already now now um uh, huh. so, so 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 we 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 define it as follows so we are saying that uh, any uh, alpha in t the transformation takes it to uh, a tuple which is c1 to uh, c1 and uh, up to cn such that the c1 to cn are, are basically the coordinates of alpha with, with respect to this basis b right that is uh, 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 the, the the linear combination or uh, the the coefficients of, of the linear combination of the basis basis vectors to get this uh, particular alpha okay so uh, so I, i'm taking so what, what am i doing here i'm taking an um, uh, element alpha which is some uh, vector in the vector space and mapping it to the coordinates of this vector coordinates of, of this vector in uh, so coordinates under the basis b right under the basis b right so um so uh, uh, so i i have i, I defined a transformation like this so I, I i i i need to prove two things right one thing is that t has to be a linear transformation right and second thing that it it, it also has to be a one one transformation right so uh, we'll prove it, it it is linear in this way so uh, as usual that you take two elements alpha and beta in the vector space uh, p so i can write this alpha and beta as linear combinations of the basis uh, uh, of the vectors in the basis b which is like this right so i can write as sigma i a i alpha i which are where a i are the coordinates of alpha in in terms of the basis b and b i uh, are the coordinates of the vector beta in the same basis uh, b Right. So, what is T of C alpha plus beta is basically uh, C times this vector plus C, uh, b plus beta. Right. So, this I can write it as uh, this basically becomes sigma i C a i alpha i the sigma i b i alpha i. Right. This uh, this happens because of your uh, idea of your um, uh, compatibility right compatibility operation and now i can rearrange all of these terms to give me sigma i c a i plus b i alpha i 
right now so so uh, so what am i doing here I, i'm basically applying a transformation t on this vector right right uh, so we, 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 we the way we have defined our transformation is that it maps this particular vector to the coordinates under the uh, the um, uh, 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 basis b right so therefore this will just be a uh, uh, tuple of all of these entries that is c1 c a1 plus b1 until c a and b n right so this is basically an element of fn which which we uh, which you already know right uh, so so uh, now we look at c times uh, t of alpha plus t of beta which is just the you know uh, uh, um, uh, addition and, and multiplication under the uh, vector space fn which is exactly the same right so therefore we have proved that t of c alpha plus beta is c times t of alpha plus t of beta so therefore t is linear right now we need to prove that uh, t is one one so proving t is one one is same as pro uh, proving that t is non singular right from the previous uh, section so uh, to prove non singular uh, so let's say i i i have a, a vector alpha which is a, a, which is a, denoted like this that is your uh, linear combination of the vectors in the basis so t alpha equal to 0 would imply that each of these uh, uh, so 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 t alpha is basically a, a tuple in in the vector space fn which is c1 to cn this should be equal to the zero vector in this uh, in this uh, vector space the zero vector in this uh, uh, vector space is all zeros of uh, so n n values of all zeros so so for these two to be equal all all these individual entries has to be equal to zero when when these are all equal to zero what would that mean by by putting these values back here you get alpha to be zero right so we have proved that a, a t alpha equal to zero implies that alpha is zero and therefore t is non singular therefore t is one one so which means that any n dimensional vector space is basically isomorphic to uh, the the vectors uh, the uh, vector space fn right okay um so we'll, 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 we now look at one problem which 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 is this idea um so uh, let v and w be finite dimensional vector space over the field f prove that v and w are isomorphic if and only if their dimensions are matching right so we need to prove two con two things here uh, if and only if right so we have two conditions one is that if the dimensions are same right then right so uh, i'll call this as let's say a and b conditions so we need to prove b implies a and also a implies b right so uh, we'll first go with b implies a so let's say uh, dimension of v is equal to dimension of w which is equal to n and this is a finite quantity right as mentioned here finite dimensional uh, so if, if, if this is true then i can say that v is isomorphic to fn space from the previous theorem just now we proved and w is also isomorphic to fn space uh, uh, fn vector space so therefore uh, when this happens uh, so uh, by, by, by the definition of isomorphic there exists some transformation t which goes from v to fn and uh, u which goes from fn to w right uh, and the fact that t and u both are uh, 1 1 right t and u are both are 1 1 so now consider the uh, uh, the transformation u t which is a composition of these two which is uh, v uh, so, so so this particular transformation takes an element uh, from v and spits out an element uh, in w right so now consider that alpha 1 is not equal to alpha 2 some non equal uh, vectors in the vector space v this would mean that t of alpha 1 is not equal to t of alpha 2 right because t is 1 1 right because this is because t is 1 1 now when this happens uh, so let's say uh, t of alpha 1 is beta 1 t of alpha 2 is beta 2 so the, so which means uh, beta 1 is not equal to beta 2 now apply the uh, uh, idea of u so when this happens u of beta 1 is also not equal to u of beta 2 why because again u is also 1 1 right u is also 1 1 now so which means you have proved that u t of alpha 1 is not equal to u t of alpha 2 right so uh, when so when we have any two vectors which, which are not equal in the vector space their images in 
um, the uh, transformation ut is are also not equal therefore ut is 1 1 and therefore v and w are isomorphic right so we have so so that is we have found a we have found a 1 1 transformation which is a linear right uh, the, the the proof that ut is linear we have already done it in the previous uh, section the algebra of linear transformations right so, uh, so 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 basically ut is a linear transformation which is 1 1 so therefore v and w are isomorphic right um, so we, we, we now prove the other way around we say that okay if v and w are isomorphic uh, we need to prove that uh, that uh, the their dimensions are the same so it uh, so uh, let's say that, that uh, the, the dimension of v is m and dimension of w is n and both of these are finite right from the from the uh, from the from the question so uh, so let's say that uh, t is some um, you know uh, uh, transformation which goes from b to w uh, and, and t is 1 1 right because they are isomorphic so uh, there exists some uh, transformation t which is 1 1 and linear uh, and the thing is that since it is 1 1 it is also non singular again from the previous sections so how uh, how consider the uh, uh, the basis for v that is alpha 1 to alpha m because we have um, uh, dimension of v is m i have m elements in its basis so uh, alpha 1 to alpha m is a basis for a basis for v we then apply this transformation t on on each of these elements so i, I get a set t alpha 1 to t alpha m uh, 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 and my claim is that this particular uh, 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 set is a linearly independent subset of w right and this is because of the fact that t is non-singular right so as you know that if t is non-singular what happens is it carries linearly independent subsets linearly independent subsets right so any linearly independent subset of uh, of v when applying uh, t on that will, will also be a linearly independent subset of w when this happens uh, so uh, so so if this is true then n has to be more than or equal to m right because uh, if not then uh, your um, yeah huh. so so uh, this is true because uh, when dimension of the vector space is n right so any linearly independent subset of uh, of this uh, w cannot exceed the uh, the uh, dimensionality of the uh, of the vector space we did this under basis and dimensions uh, basis and dimensions part of the lecture right so so this implies that n is more n is greater than or equal to m now since they are isomorphic i can i can also find some other um, you know, uh, 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 transformation u, which goes from b to uh, w to b, right? And, and we use the same arguments here. We say, okay, uh, so since uh, uh, isomorphic, so so th there exists some uh, transformation uh, u, which is one one, and and therefore non singular. Uh, and the same ideas we, we apply here. We say, okay, beta one to beta n is a basis for w. U beta one and u beta n will again be a linearly independent subset of v. Right. See, this is a subset of W because T alphas are all elements of W. U, uh, U uh, betas are, are basically elements of V. Right. And again, the same way, it is true because U is non-singular. So it carries your linearly independent subsets. Right. And then this implies that M is greater than or equal to N because of the fact that, again, the same idea that dim uh, V is M. So any linearly independent subset of uh, 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 V cannot exceed uh, this particular um, uh, number so therefore m is greater than or equal to n so the only value which satisfies both of these conditions is that m is equal to n right so therefore you prove that your dimension of v is equal to dimension of w right now uh, the thing is this is all true only when you have finite dimensional idea right you be very careful while applying this sort of an uh, thought process because this holds only for finite dimensional uh, finite dimensional conditions and and the, the finiteness of the, uh, the the finiteness condition um starts breaking uh i mean it 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 it, it um, basically becomes an issue when uh, you have to uh, you know prove this isomorphic uh, stuff because we 
also uh, prove this thing for um, only your finite uh, dimensional vector spaces right so this is true on finite dimensional vector spaces all right okay so with this we'll um, move to the next question uh, which is basically your uh, okay so so this basically takes the ideas of your um, you know vector spaces over usual fields and and stuff like that um, and we we we, we discussed that um, uh, linear transformations themselves can be viewed as vector spaces over the fields f so uh, what we have here is that we have a vector, uh, two vector spaces v and w over the same field f and we have a, a, a transformation which goes from v to w uh, i was saying that u is isomorphism which basically means that u is one one non singular and all the things that that come with this definition what we need to prove is that uh, a, a, a function like this which which takes an, a, an element t and and has a u t u inverse as its output is an isomorphism from l of v comma v onto l of w comma w now we haven't uh, uh, looked at this notation uh, previously we'll define it right now so uh, we, we we spoke that your um, you know tau let's say set of all linear transformations right um, uh, is a vector space right is a vector space over f right we we saw this now let's say i i constrain myself to only linear operators right so we said that um huh, so it, it transformations uh uh t says that which goes from v to w is again where v and w are again vector spaces over the same field f um so what i will do now is i i i'll use this l of v comma v as to, to, to denote a set of all linear operators linear operators on the uh, vector space v right again over the field f right over the field f is also a vector space so this is also a vector space again by definition right because it's a sub it's a subspace of this uh, tau uh, again we can prove that by using your usual uh, subspace uh, uh, definition theorem right um, okay so over the field um, f right um, so this is a vector space in itself right now what we are saying is uh, i will take an element of this vector space um, okay um, and uh, uh, yeah uh, so 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 so, so what does this vector space consist of right the elements of this vector space are basically linear operators themselves right over the same vector space v now uh, so we, we want to prove that this uh, this particular sort of a transformation which takes a, a transformation t uh, and maps it to some other transformation which is u t u inverse is an isomorphism from l of v comma v onto l of w comma w right so till now what we have looked at is we have looked at let's say there are two you know um uh, 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 vector spaces v, v and w we uh, have looked at uh, transformation of, of this kind you have said okay there is some transformation which goes from v to w uh, and the fact that it, it is some isomorphism from uh, from uh, v, v onto w so we, we, we actually gave a symbol for this from for this uh, transformation which, which was t so what we'll do now is we'll 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 give it we'll, we'll give a symbol for this let's say k okay uh, this k basically is taking an element from this l v comma v and spitting out an element which is uh, in this uh, uh, in this vector space l of w comma w right so the do domain is um, the uh, linear operators on v the co-domain is li linear operator on w okay so uh so uh, uh and the way it is defined is that it this t it, it takes t and gives out a a, a a a transformation u t u inverse right where t is some uh, uh operator that is going from v to v so what all we need to prove to 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 prove this particular statement first thing that we need to prove is that this this particular result of applying this so-called uh, 
a transformation the k transformation is actually an element of a w comma w right that it is linear operator on the space w right that is first thing we need to prove second thing is that it's a linear transformation okay so uh, so, so uh, yeah so so uh, it's it, it it's part of this set and it's also a, a linear transformation and third thing is it, 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 it the, as the question says that it, it, it should be an isomorphic uh, isomorphism between these two uh, vector spaces right uh, so first things first uh, uh, so you uh, as we said is a, uh, a transformation from v to w and u inverse then becomes a, a, a transformation from w to v right so your u t u inverse is basically just your composition of linear transformations right we we, 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 we already know you know uh, how to deal with the um, uh, the, this sort of thing, right? So, uh, so what does uh, U, U T U inverse basically, right? So, um, the uh, the the domain and, uh, and codomain of this particular transformation. So, U inverse takes an element from W and uh, gives out an element of um, a V, which then gets passed on to T, right? And then the element uh, coming out from T is then passed on to the uh, uh, um, uh, 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 transformation U. So therefore, this particular uh, transformation is actually uh, uh, operating on the uh, the uh, vector space W, right? All right. Uh, so, so so we know that this particular um, uh, particular uh, you know. Uh, uh, composition is uh, is a is is an element of is an element of L of W comma W, right? Because it's a linear transformation and operating purely on this uh, uh, set the, uh, uh, W, right? We now need to prove that K is a linear transformation. See, K is um, uh, 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 acting on the elements of this and giving out elements here, right? So what we need to do is we need to prove uh, we we need to treat this uh, 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 you know take two elements from this um, vector space uh, 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 this l of v comma v which is the sort of all linear operators on set v so let's say i have two uh, uh, operators t comma z i need to prove that k of ct comma ct plus z is c times k of t plus c, uh, k of z where c is uh, some um, scalar over the field f right so uh, this basically becomes your u times ct plus z u inverse now this can be expanded in this format because of the fact that your uh, uh, your composition of two uh, of two linear operators right uh, which can then be again um, you know we can take this u u also inside uh, this particular um, uh, uh, transformation which we then get as uh, c, c times k of t plus k, uh, k, uh, k of z so therefore we have proved that k is a linear transformation so uh, one thing we, we, we need to understand k is transforming what to what though k is transforming some linear operator on v to a linear operator on w okay uh, we may not it, it, it to prove that k is 1 1 so we, we assume that it is not one one let's say so so what what would that mean it would mean that i have two transformations t1 t2 here t1 and t2 both are uh, transformations from v to v right such that k of t1 is equal to k of t2 right so so uh, uh, by by definition of uh, one one right so which would mean that u u t1 u inverse is u t2 u inverse right um now what I will do is I'll I'll apply the uh, transformation u on both the sides from the uh, right side, right? Uh, as, and since u inverse u is i, right? So I get u t one is u t two. Again, apply u inverse uh, from the left side here. You will get u uh, u inverse u is i, and hence you get t one equal to t two, right? So if k of t one is equal to k of t two, um, uh, we have that t1 is equal to t2 but we have uh, we had assumed that t1 is not equal to t2 which we, and therefore we have a contradiction so therefore k is 1 1 and therefore k uh, defined in this format right so which takes a transformation that is 
uh, uh, operating on the set uh, on the vector space V, uh, uh, and I, I, and taking it to a, a transformation which is defined as U T U inverse, is an isomorphism between these two uh, uh, between these two uh, um, vector spaces, right? So this. This particular uh, example actually pushes the boundary of uh, of how you understand about vector spaces in in themselves. So vector spaces are, are very abstract quantities, and the idea that uh, linear transformations can be viewed as vector spaces themselves that is basically explored in this particular example, right? So if this is a bit in in involved, it is meant to be so, uh, and you know try it out uh, once again and, and probably we can discuss over uh, the Google group. Okay, so we'll now move on to this idea of uh, representation of transformations by matrices. Um, okay, so before that, we'll, we'll cover a bit of an idea in this uh, coordinates uh, part of the lecture. I had uh, told that, you know, we'll, we'll discuss some of the notation, uh, notational stuff here. So, so uh, if, it, if it, if you remember, uh, uh, let's say we have a, a vector space uh, V and we have some a basis um, for, for the vector space, some set which spans the vector space V and are linear independent. And I said that uh, we, we'll use this script B to, to, to denote a, 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 some, some, some sort of an ordering uh, of these um, uh, basis vectors, right? So uh, if I have some uh, uh, vector in this um, vector space, let's say beta. Uh, so I I, I, I I know that I can basically, um, you know, represent this uh, beta as a, uh, in a combination of these uh, basis vectors, right? So we define this uh, coordinate of beta under B, okay? Coordinate of beta under B, one second. Yeah, so coordinate of beta under B under this uh, script B, right, as beta and then script B as basically a tuple which is uh, your uh, respective C1 to um, Cn in our case, right. So it's basically an element of your Fn space. Right, we 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 just now saw this sort of a thing when we proved the isomorphism sort of a condition. Right, we we said that any n-dimensional vector space can be uh, we we use an isomorphism to to this um, f-n space. So so basically that, that that isomorphism sort of an idea is is what comes up again here. The the idea is that I can represent the coordinates of this. Um, uh, 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 vector beta under this uh, B uh, basis to, to be some sort of a n tuple um, n tuple entity, right? Now um, we also saw that uh, you know uh, two bases uh, it it cannot be the same, right? So uh, the the only condition for any two sets to be basis basis is that both of them should have the same number of elements in them and that their elements should span uh, V. And the fact that uh, uh, <laughs> they have to be linearly independent, so I can very well, um, you know, have two, uh, 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 you know, sets, uh, two two subsets, which are both the basis for, for for a given vector space. Let's say V, right? So we we then saw about you know how can we uh, how can we uh, represent uh, one particular uh, um, uh, uh, you know uh, a vector in in uh, uh, from one basis to, to to another basis right it, it, it it's coordinates from, from from one basis to another basis right so we have uh, we, we saw the idea that uh, you know uh, we basically need this sort of a, a coordinate transformation matrix right which takes your um, uh, which 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 takes your um, uh, coordinates of any vector in the uh, uh, the uh, the basis b1 to a uh, uh, coordinates of the same vector in the basis b2 right so we we, we saw this sort of a uh, thing thing here uh, we'll now look at we'll now look at you know how this sort of an idea 
um, you know, uh, tra- uh, shows up in uh, <laughs> you know, trying to represent the transformations by, by matrices. So, so now let's say I have uh, two vectors, this is uh, V and W, and I have a transformation uh, T which goes from V to W. And the fact that uh, the uh, dimensionality of both of these are finite, right? Uh, finite and uh, that uh, dim v is n and dim w is m right so i can now uh, have a, a, an ordered ba- basis for the vector space v which is alpha 1 to alpha n and some b dash uh, as the uh, ordered basis basis uh, set for the uh, vector space w which is b1, b1, beta 1 to beta m right so all of these are so alpha i's are all vectors in uh, uh, v beta i's are all vectors in w Right. So now, uh, let's say I have a, a, a vector alpha in V. So I I, I, I have it as alpha. Uh, so I can represent alpha as a linear combination of the elements of, of the basis. So there is sigma uh, i c i alpha i, where c i is from the field F. So uh, T of alpha i, that is when I apply the transformation T on, on each of these uh, basis vectors, they are all elements of your uh, uh, vector space uh, w and therefore i can represent those vectors uh, those vectors as linear combinations of the basis of um, uh, uh, w there is b uh, uh, for example b dash right so i am representing the linear combination um, as uh, this a i j b j uh, uh, for, for, for every alpha i right so now I can um, look at T alpha as the summation I uh, C I. So uh, this again, so T alpha, sorry. Yeah. So I can look at, uh, so yeah, so T alpha is just uh, summation I C I T of alpha I. T of alpha I, uh, if you substitute, you will get this. Right. So by rearranging these terms, where see i is uh, so both both of these summations are over finite quantities. So I can exchange the summations. So I would get something like this. Right. So um, so uh, what am I doing here? Right. So I am basically representing this uh, t alpha. That is some vector uh, in uh, in the vector space W as the linear combination of the elements in uh, B dash. Right. So, um, uh, so this particular quantity, that is sigma i a i j c i, can can be seen as a, a, a multiplication of a matrix and a, a, a two matrices actually. Right. So, if I have, uh, if I define a matrix A such that the the elements of this matrix A are all a i j's, right, such that uh, it, it's a it's a m cross n matrix. Uh, which is uh, uh, basically having m rows and n columns, right? And uh, the the elements are, are, are a i j. And if I define this uh, vector, uh, this matrix n cross one matrix, in this format, there is all the elements c i, which are uh, from uh, again n elements uh, in this, right? So uh, so what are these basically? These are your coordinates of all the um, uh, alpha i's in uh, b dash. Right. We saw so these AIJs were basically all the, uh, the the coordinates of this resultant uh, alpha is right coordinates of uh, non alpha is T alpha is right T alpha is in in B dash, and this is basically the coordinate uh, coordinate of your um, alpha in B right coordinate of uh, alpha uh, alpha in B. Now uh, so so therefore the coordinates of T alpha in B dash can now be written as A into C. Right, which is again the m cross one matrix, which can be seen as a uh, the uh, I mean so so, so the, it's basically your um, um, these elements like right? so so each of these um, uh, elements of A C would 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 basically be a uh, summation over uh, A I J and C I, right? So uh, but the thing is, uh, as we already saw, that that basis can change. So therefore, your a also can change, right? So we, we, we represent this a as a matrix in this format. That is, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, coordinates of your uh, 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 
basis that is your b right in terms of b dash right so 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 if if b is your uh, uh, basis for your domain which is n dimensional uh, basis right and your your b dash is the basis for, for your co domain co domain which is m dimensional so this uh, matrix that is denoted like this t b b dash would would would, would then be a, a, a an element of your uh, uh, vector space m f m cross n right so it, it'll be some matrix in this particular uh, space right so now we, 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 we actually have a bunch of theorems to prove i'll skip these ideas because these are again very straightforward from the idea of coordinate transformations right um, so so the the uh, the point here is that um, if you want the coordinates uh, of this um, t alpha in b dash which is what you were looking at um, here right so that basically is uh, this t b b dash right which we had as a here by the way right so this a into c where c is the coordinates of alpha under the basis uh, b right so a uh, th thing to remember here b dash is the um, uh, is the basis for the codomain b is the uh, basis for your um, uh, domain right uh, and this t b b dash can be seen as a transformation matrix right which gives you the coordinates of the of the transformed vector under the new basis b dash right uh, uh, so you can then then look at you know uh, what would happen if i want to do a composition of two of two transformations for example let's say i have a a transformation t which goes from v to w and you again uh, from w to z uh, the the basis uh, I, I, I'm using for V is let's say B the basis for W is B dash and the basis for Z is B double dash uh, so U T is basically a, a, a transformation which goes from V to Z so the the transformation matrix for the for the uh, transformation U T which is defined in this way there is U T from uh, from B to B double dash can be written as a uh, matrix multiplication right so this is basically a matrix multiplication okay of uh, uh, the uh, matrix uh, the, the, the transformation matrices of, of both of these individual uh, 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 you know transformations right so so your u u from b, b dash to b double dash and t from b to b dash right so uh, you can also look at matrix compatibility as an idea here i mean uh, as, as a sanity check right so let's say if this is um, n dimensional this is m dimensional and this is p dimensional uh, uh, you know vector space so this is going to be a uh, m cross n this is going to be a p cross m right uh, so, so therefore th this is a matrix compatible and this is going to be a uh, again uh, p cross n right so this is what you get your uh, uh, so, so so basically if you have these two with you you can look and look at the transformation uh, uh, the, the composition transformation uh, easily from your matrix multiplication right okay uh, so uh, another very very central idea is that uh, okay so, 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 so we, 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 we already discussed that you know the um, any transformation uh, acting on the same vector space can be can be seen as a uh, linear operator right so we we, we have a t uh, transformation which goes from b to v and we have a b which is a basis for b right so uh, the the transformation matrix is usually uh, you know represented just by a single b because that's understood that it is uh, on the same vector space the the fact that t is invertible okay uh, follows from the fact that t b that is the transformation matrix under this uh, uh, basis b also has to be invertible right now this is a very powerful uh, sort of uh, looking um, at uh, you know uh, matrix uh, representations again uh, i'm just putting all of these ideas here uh, all of these it, 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 it to be proved uh, rigorously as to you know why this is true and so on uh, again I, 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 i'm leaving it for now we'll uh, see if time limits otherwise you know the the hoffman uh, book does a great great deal of justice in uh, giving this proofs very diligently 
okay so we'll we'll, we'll now see one example of you know how we can get these uh, matrix uh, transformation matrices and so on right okay uh, so we have a, a transformation let's say t which goes from uh, uh, t uh, c square to c square which is so c is the um, c is a set of uh, complex numbers right complex uh, numbers right um, so this uh, uh, defined in this way that is t is x1 comma x2 gives x1 comma 0 um, and uh, Let's say we have B as is standard ordered basis for B C square. That is basically your uh, one zero and zero one, right? Because we have two elements here. Uh, two is your dimension of your vector space, and we have uh, one more basis B dash given as one comma i comma i minus i comma two. So these are your two bit two uh, elements of this basis B dash. So feel free to prove that it's a basis. Prove that B dash. Is in fact a basis right so how would you go up proving this you need to prove two things one is linear independence right and second thing is that it spans your vector space c square right vector space c square okay um, so we will now look at you know how to get uh, this matrix of t relative to the pair uh, B comma B uh, B dash, which is basically you want this uh, matrix T B B dash, right? So first things first, we, we so what what are different alphas and betas here? So so uh, B is basically your alpha comma uh, comma alpha two. So alpha one is basically your your standard basis, uh, one comma zero. Alpha two is zero one. B dash is as given in the question. So that's beta one beta two. What we need to do here basically is is that we, we want to represent uh, I mean express your um, uh, transformed, uh, you know, basis vector, uh, basis vectors, uh, uh, into the new uh, basis that we have. So, so t alpha one is basically one comma zero. This way, by applying your uh, t on this alpha one, right, and t alpha two is zero comma zero, right, uh, from the uh, definition of t. So we now need to express these as linear combinations of beta 1 and beta 2 so uh, basically uh, we'll see that okay 1 comma 0 is some a1 1 comma i a2 minus i comma 2 and the thing is a1 and a2 belong to uh, your c right so see the thing is your um, fn we discussed this that if f is a field right if f is a field then fn is a vector space it is a vector uh, space over the same field f right so we we saw that so, so, so c is also a field right so cn is a vector space over the field, over the same field complex numbers so a1 a2 can be complex numbers here okay so uh, so, so so basically we want this uh, one to be a1 minus i a2 and zero to be i a one plus two a two. We can now represent uh, it as a matrix um, system of, of linear equations. We will actually do this uh, hopefully um, today. Um, hopefully today. Okay. Uh, so we, 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 we have it like this. So, so we're trying to represent this as a uh, 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 matrix multiplication to one zero, right? So you can get this uh, from your um, usual matrix inverse, right? This is all hopefully high school algebra, right? So we 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 get the inverse in this format. So we so we we, we actually get your a one a two to be a one to be uh, two and a two be minus i. Uh, and once you get uh, you can you can actually verify your uh, this one. So so uh, so uh, a two is the uh, um, uh, you know the coefficient for your for beta one that is two times one comma i. And minus i is the coefficient for your uh, beta two. Right? So this is a one beta one, a two beta two, right? So this turns out to be uh, two two i minus i because it's minus i squared. Uh, sorry, i squared, and this is uh, minus two i, and therefore you get one zero, which is uh, the right thing to do, right? And uh, uh, same thing here. So so uh, uh, we so, so we we have now represented. So this one zero was a t alpha one, right? t alpha 2 was 0 comma 0 this 
I, I, I need to uh, see it as uh, B, uh, B1, B2 and very very straightforwardly you, you, can, you can see that B1, B2 will be, will be 0 and this is because your beta 1 and beta 2 are uh, basis, right? It's a basis for your basis for C squared, right? So uh, the the uh, the uh, the linear combination will be zero if and only if your uh, your coefficients are actually zero. So this is straightforward that b one b two are zero. So now we have found that t alpha one is two times beta one plus minus i times beta two and t alpha two is zero times beta one plus zero times beta two. So this your your your, your transformation matrix that is t b p dash is just going to be 2 minus i which is your alpha 1 coordinates sorry t alpha 1 coordinates right uh, 2 minus i right so your t alpha 1 under the beta beta dash uh, is basically your 2 comma minus i t alpha 2 under beta uh, under b dash is 0 comma 0 so you, you will have uh, your uh, you know coordinates like t alpha 2 coordinates so this is the uh, way you can represent your uh, transformation matrix under this basis b and b dash okay cool um, I, I, and one way to check this is uh, uh, from this from this idea that you know uh, t alpha b, b dash is uh, this one so you can now look at the same sort of same sort of a process so let's say i check t alpha b dash it has to be t b b dash alpha in b right t alpha oh sorry alpha one yeah so so t alpha one b dash is um uh, what by the way we had it which is two comma uh, two comma minus i right which is what we uh, derived here this has to be equal to two minus i zero zero times um right this particular uh, may, uh, vector that is alpha one in in the basis b alpha one in, in the basis c b, b basically has the coordinates one zero right so when you when you do your matrix multiplication you will basically get it as two comma minus i which is uh, what you need to check right okay so uh, so here we basically solve problems like this in uh, in this sense right um, so uh, we'll see some hopefully like some ideas on this uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues problems maybe uh, but we'll 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 see if uh, if 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 time remains yeah okay oh there are two theorems pending here is it okay so we'll we'll, we'll do that um, you know uh, next class uh, this particular theorem yeah that if i have uh, 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 a transformation t which is a early transformation and v1 to vm are non zero eigenvectors of t with eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda m respectively and if we see that uh, lambda 1 to lambda m are distinct then v1 to vm are linearly independent okay so we will we'll do this theorem in the next class today i want to just take up uh, some basics here so I realize that when, uh, when you want to talk about the concepts to matrices, we need to discuss a bit about matrices first, right? Matrix, um, rather than introduction, it is basically uh, views, right? So different way of viewing matrices in themselves, right? Okay, so first, uh, and, the, and the most uh, common and very famous view of looking at a matrix comes from the idea of uh, system of linear equations, okay? So I'll just, um, let me... Uh, it's a special marker okay let's say first view of matrices okay so uh, so it, it comes from, from, from the idea of system of linear equations linear equations right what does this uh, basically mean linear equation and a system a system basically is just a collection of uh, these things linear equations uh, with the uh, with some concept we'll come to that equations basically just means that you need you have something like a equal to b sort of form linear uh, is uh, from the fact that what we are trying to solve for is linear in nature that is let's say i have uh, you know something like this uh, 2x plus 3y equal to 0 and 3x plus 2y equal to let's say 3 okay so uh, 
these two are equations in in themselves they are linear in the sense that uh, the unknown variables which is x and y here are uh, appearing in the linear form that is uh, in the powers of 1 or they can also appear in powers of 0 right so i, I can i can okay, i can always have another equation which says um 3y equals to 8 or whatever right um okay so a uh, system because it's a collection of the uh, of these uh, you know equations uh, with the constraint that whatever uh, value you find like for x comma y should satisfy all of these right should satisfy all at once right you cannot have a, a choose and mismatch sort of a thing right okay so uh, when you have a when you have a system of linear equations like this a more general form of looking at it could be something like this right so i say that okay um you know summation um of um let's say i okay ai and xi um equals to some uh, j okay so uh, i'll say ai j uh, xi is equal to e j yeah correct so so i i basically uh, you know have uh, j equal to let's say one to some um, k equations right and each equation basically is a uh, a, 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 a linear combination of the uh, unknowns xi's right so xi's let's say uh, one to n are unknowns Right, are unknowns and these a i j are some coefficients uh, for these x i's right so by now uh, i mean we, we we should have some doubt about you know what are these unknowns uh, uh, what are these coefficients actually and so on so to to make it a bit more rigorous what we say is we say that all of these basically belong to some field f right so all these a i j right uh, are are, are, are from uh, are from some field f b j therefore are also from the field f and x i's should also take values from the field f right this is the idea that we have so when you uh, basically when you, when you multiply two elements of the of the same field you you, you get an element of the same field and, and and that's how this system is in some sense consistent uh, to uh, define okay okay so with this in mind um, so what we uh, do now uh, so how is matrix coming here is that you represent this sort of a set of equations uh, um, uh, a bit more uh, uh, let's say um, uh, cleanly in some sense using uh, the idea of a matrix right so a matrix in this sense is just a rectangular uh, grid of numbers grid of uh, elements right so uh, basically we say that uh, if i have a matrix let's say m which belongs to uh, f m cross n we already have already seen this sort of a, uh, a vector space before right so what it means is that every element of this m uh, let's say I'll, I'll denote the elements of m as m i j right belongs to this field uh, f Right and uh, uh, yeah so so uh, okay sorry not not rectangular I mean yeah, rectangular what, what the hell, right so okay so now uh, so so the way we 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 uh, uh, come uh, you know uh, show this sort of a uh, um, uh, system of linear equations as a matrix uh, multiplication operation uh, in this format so what what we what we do is we say okay all the x i's I will, uh, you know, form it as a one, uh, you know, uh, matrix of uh, one uh, column, right? So I'll say that it is, um, sorry, yeah. So I'll say that there's some x, right, uh, which is uh, consisting of all x i's. That is all unknown. So therefore, x is therefore unknown in some sense. So i equal to one to let's say n, which is the uh, yeah, number of unknowns. We'll use um, m for your uh, number of equations. Yeah. Okay. Um, m for so so okay. Uh, so so then we have your um, you know um, uh, m as your m as your uh, collection of your um, 
so a is your you know collection of all the a ijs that you had right with you uh, this would 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 be a uh, m cross n matrix right and then we we uh, collect all the uh, 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 all the values which are not uh, associated with any variable which which are the um, i i times of this equation all the bjs basically uh, under another vector uh, matrix which is again a column matrix sort of a thing where i say all the bjs where j is equal to 1 to m right and then represent all of this in as ax equal to b right so this is a, a column matrix right it has only one column okay x is also a column matrix right again the only one column and a is a matrix of the order m cross n this is of the order n cross 1 this is of the order m m cross 1 all right so this is this is the uh, way to represent uh, i mean uh, so uh, the, the, the the whole idea of uh, matrices uh, uh, so, the, so the first view is basically uh, looking at as a collection of all the coefficients in a system of linear equations right so the, this is the first view of uh, you know matrices that you that you see now in in an attempt to solve these sort of equations we now look at you know properties of, of this uh, of the system right so ax equal to b if i'm if i'm given something like ax equal to b right um again so let, let, let x be the vectorized notation again uh, i mean sorry uh, i'll use let me just change it yeah so x is your matrix uh, uh, column matrix right so uh, when i have this ax equal to b sort of a matrix uh, uh, sort of an equation i need to uh, find uh, you know uh, uh, values of x given all these values of a and b so a and b are known x is unknown and, and you want to find a solution for this x right so uh, we now then look at you know what are properties uh, are uh, are uh, you know um, uh, applicable on this system to get your solutions right so let's say uh, so one simple property will 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 look at so let's say um, i have a equation which is of this form uh, two equations of this form right let's say so x plus y equals to 5 and x minus y equals to let's say 2 all right um mm, let's make it uh, 3 simply for simplicity yeah okay um so uh the, the way you would try to solve this is you say okay i will i will add these two equations and i will get let's say 2x equals to 8 right um uh, right um so this is because a equal to b and then i say this is uh, c equal to d uh, i can add equal 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 uh, elements and this is from your euler's axiom basically euler's axioms this is the root of this thing okay so uh, so I, I said 2x equal to 8 so x equals to 4 and then i put this 4 here i say 4 plus y is equal to 5 y is equal to 1 so what are we doing here is that we are trying to manipulate these uh, these uh, system of system of equations so that we can find the solutions in a much easier format uh, so so that my my uh, uh, equation becomes a uh, equation one variable which can then be solved uh, uh, using simple arithmetic right right uh, like um, multiplication and division so in the same uh, uh, lines of thought process uh, we now uh, uh, define uh, operations which are which uh, keep the uh, consistency of, of these um, i mean uh, which don't change the solution of the system of linear equations but do end up uh, 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 you know uh, helping us solve the system of equations more easily right so under under that thought process is where we look, uh, come to something called as rho echelon form right rho echelon uh, rho echelon form of uh, matrix uh, of the of the matrices okay so um, okay so there are i think um, mm, uh 
three rules under this um, i mean three three rules which are sort of very um, intuitive for example so let's say i i i had these two equations right let's say i'll i'll call them as um, e1 equation and e2 equation so basically uh, if i add two equations that is e1 plus e2 if i do uh, this operation is fine because this doesn't change uh, the solution of the uh, i mean the the solution of the equation in in any way right so e1 plus e2 operation is uh, is fine in something let, let me call it fine or okay or whatever right now uh, i can also do even minus e2 right this is also okay um can i do something like uh, multiplying the equation with some non zero value right so for example let's say if i say x plus y is 5 can i say 2x plus 2y is 10 this is fine right because i, I, I I, I, I'm multiplying equal quantities. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, on both sides of the equality, and therefore the, the resultant is same as the previous one, right? So multiplying with a, a constant k1, uh, some some k, uh, for the equation is, is also fine, as long as k is non-zero, right? Because if k is zero, it's it's just basically uh, true for all possible equations, right? So, um, yeah. <laughs> And the thing is also that if I were to you know multiply with zero also, it it doesn't give me any um, usefulness out of it, right? So uh, where k is uh, you know non-zero, right? Um, uh, there was one more rule. Um, okay, uh, so uh, when I when I when I do this sort of uh, you know transformations. Uh, there are no changes on the uh, uh, unknown variables here, right? There are only changes on the coefficients, right? Because if you see when I added the uh, x and y, uh, uh, so I can basically write this uh, 2x plus 8, one second. Yeah, yeah. this 2x plus 8, I can, I can also uh, write it as 2x plus 0y equals to 8, right? So, so what has changed here is that the coefficients of these um, uh, unknown variables has changed. Also, the right hand side of the equation has changed, but the variables as such ha ha have remained untouched, right? So, uh, so, so basically, <laughs> we are now moving towards an idea where we can uh, manipulate this um, in a, a thing like ax equal to b sort of a situation. I can manipulate A, I can manipulate B such that I don't compromise my uh, original set of equations in X, right? So we'll, uh, uh, in the next class probably, uh, look at, um, you know, uh, uh, these these uh, idea, these uh, operations called uh, 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 row, row transformations, which preserve this uh, system of uh, linear equations, uh, preserve in the sense they don't uh, they don't change your solution set to anything else but rather make it easier for us to work with a and b and then also look at properties of uh, a and b right for example uh, the, the the first most uh, the, the first properties uh, you know what should be the uh, uh, relation between m and n right uh, m should be greater lesser or equal to or whatever uh, with n right how many unknowns you have and how many equations you have that is point number 1 Point number two: What are the operations that uh, that 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 keep this sort of a uh, you know uh, the, the the solution unchanged, uh, uh, but help us solve the equation in, in a much more simpler way, right? Uh, which are uh, called your row, which are called your row operations, right? Um, and then this will lead lead us into something called as the row echelon form. Row row echelon um, row echelon form of of, of, of a matrix right of a matrix uh, and uh, we might or might not go into this reduced row echelon form reduced row echelon form uh, and from here we'll look at something called as a rank of a matrix 
right? Langhoffer matrix. Now here is where uh, things are getting interesting because we already have discussed something called as a Langhoffer transformation, right? And we'll we'll uh, now you know connect the idea of a transformation and of a matrix uh, in some sense, uh, and see you know how these two ranks themselves have a relation between them, right? And and uh, and then basically move to a, a way to uh, you know, uh, uh, look at uh, the the solution directly in terms of A. Uh, so so so, so the, this is one way of going about it, right? Uh, we will say that okay, I will keep on applying these operations such that my um, A and B be uh, A and B be, uh, uh, becomes so simple that I, I can just read off the values of uh, my my unknowns from this uh, from this uh, uh, resultant set of e uh, operations. Um, right, uh, so th this is one way, and uh, 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 and the other way is we, we we say that you know this can take a, a lot of time uh, based upon you know uh, how how big or small your matrix is. So can I look at something more direct, and then we will look at something called as inverse of a matrix, right? And this also is again interesting because we then we also look at something called as inverse transformations, right? I I I will see like in you know, how to connect these two ideas. And uh, at last, we'll then look at uh, the eigenvalues of a matrix, right? Eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, in in terms of your uh, ma matrix sort of a, a system, and again connect that with uh, eigenvalue and eigenvectors of transformations, right? Um, and we'll take this idea even a, a step further and say that you know uh, uh, where where and how this becomes important and useful, uh, and we'll touch mostly briefly. On the ideas of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, positive definite and positive semi definite matrices, and probably we'll close the uh, course there. Okay, all right. So see you on um, uh, Sunday. It is October second, um, uh, ten a.m. So we'll, we'll have a last lecture uh, on, on that day. We'll 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 complete this um, view of these matrices uh, one after the other, um, and if possible, I'll complete the uh, this. Eigen value theorem uh, here because this this is sort of important sort of a theorem. We'll complete this theorem and then we'll move on to the matrix, uh, the the different views of matrices, uh, and, and and basically its relation to you know whatever whatever we have we have learned till now. All right, okay. Uh, so we'll stop here. Uh, thank you and see you on uh, Sunday.